Welcome to another discussion, New Jersey Forensic Accountant. Today we're going to talk about discount rates and capitalization rates. This is something you often hear in finance, uh, when doing analysis, valuations, and many other situations. What is meant by discount or capitalization rate? Sometimes people will refer to it as the Federal Reserve discount rate, the federal funds rate, expected rate of return, cost of capital, required rate of return, or capitalization rate. Now, many of these are derived or derivatives of a discount rate and, uh, you know, especially a capitalization rate. But when you hear things like the Federal Reserve discount rate, that really has to do with the Federal Reserve. That is the rate that a bank, that the Federal Reserve loans to banks. That's the rate they use for their loans. They're the lender of last resort. The Fed funds rate, though, that's what the Federal Reserve encourages banks to loan to each other. And um, that's usually lower. Well, it is always lower than the Federal Reserve rate because the bank doesn't want to get involved in asymmetric issues between the banks and stuff like that. Banks know other banks better. But that is going to be a discussion for another day. But expected rate of return, cost of capital, required rate of return, and capitalization rate, these are all really our derivatives of uh, discount rate. And hopefully we get a little better understanding of why and how. I'm going to give you an example later on in this video of why. This video really discusses rates used to analyze businesses, cash flow, or other financial decision making. The definition of a discount rate is the rate of return or discount, discount future cash flows back to the present value, right? If you are going to make an investment or look at an analysis in the future, you'll, you want to be able to take that, what's going to happen in the future, and discount it back, and you can make a decision whether it's profitable or not. The great importance of the discount rate is not that it provides you with the correct answer for investment opportunity, but rather it provides you a framework under which you can analyze the investments and develop a much deeper understanding. And this is what we love to use this for. This is why we go through this analysis and many companies go through the analysis of, of looking at uh, cash flows and discount rates and doing that because it makes you think really, really deep about that issue you're looking at. And it also gives you a way to determine if you hit your objective or not. And that's the real power of a discount rate or a capitalization rate. Some people have what's called a personal discount rate. It, you know, and it operates the same as a business. For example, if someone offered you to pay you $100 a year for 10 years or $853, what would you select? You know, the way to do it is if you have a, di a personal discount rate, if it was uh, if it was two percent, well then you probably would take the 850. If it was three percent, both of these come out to the same number. And that's basically what a company does or an investor should be doing, or even if you're buying a small business, you should be doing is saying, hey, if I buy this investment, what am I going to expect to earn from it? And then you have to develop a, a discount rate. Um, if how, the, the big question here is how do you develop a, a discount? This is the, the real complexity of uh, this whole video here is how do you get a discount rate? But generally, it's not that hard, if you have, especially if you're looking at a company. If you have a company, the discount rate is what the company is required to pay investors to invest in a business, right? because you don't want to destroy value, but it makes sense. Think about it. How do you, what's a business's discount rate? Well, let's say you need to pay investors 15% to make an investment in your business, right? If you want to borrow $100 from your friend, he says, well, I want a 15% return. And you say, why? Well, I can earn 3% if I invest in a T-bill. I can earn 8% if I invest in the stock market. Your company's more risky. I want 15%. There you have your discount rate. It's 15%. Right, and if you apply that to the cash flows in the future, that's what you should pay for the business. Now, sometimes companies will use what's called a build-up method in order to find your discount rate. Um, the build-up method basically has it's composed of four components: safe rate, equity risk premium, size premium, and specific premium. And in this example here, you can see the safe rate is basically what is the safest rate you can have. Well, it's a 10-year T-bill. 
right? The equity risk premium is basically what you'd earn in the market. And the size premium is the, the bigger a company, less riskier it is for obvious reasons, right? A big company has better management. They have uh, access to loans and stuff like that. They have uh, uh, usually an established marketplace. That's how they got big in the first place. And then specific company risk. risk. Some, many, some companies are more risky than others, right? Restaurants are extremely risky, right? There's lots of stuff that uh, that you will apply this to. Now, when you add all these up, you get what's called a discount rate. And here is your number that when you look at an investment or you look at a valuation, you're going to use for this specific company because you built up a discount rate. And this is assuming a growth rate here of 3%. You're assuming that the revenues or cash flow is going to grow 3% every year. And here's where it gets really interesting because... Once a company has a discount rate, it's very easy to get what's called a capitalization rate. You just basically subtract the discount rate from the growth rate. Here it's 14.05, right? So now I have a cap rate. And remember, I said a lot of these rates are derived from the discount rate. Once you get that, you can get a cap rate. Now I'm going to show you some stuff here that you don't read in textbooks and most professors don't go in, even though it, it kind of ties this whole concept of discount rate and capitalization rate together. And what I'm going to do is go through uh, a spreadsheet that just kind of uh, gives you a good background and, and ties it together in a way that simplifies it. Okay, so here we have the build-up method that I just showed you. Here's the growth rate, right? We have a discount rate of 17%. And what we've done is we've done a forecast of cash flows for a business. So here we're going to value a business based on its cash flows from 2020 to 2024. Okay, these are in millions. And what we're assuming here is that this is the initial cash flow we're going to get is $425 million. And that's going to grow at 3% a year into for the next five years at least. And from that, we can then figure out what our cash flow is, right? Once we have our cash flow, we can apply the discount rate. We're going to say EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes, 15% of sales, which is this number here. In 220, it would be $63.8 million. Now, unfortunately, we have taxes, which would be 21% of EBIT, right, is 13.4, and investment. Now, every business makes investment, just like when you have a house. You have to make investments in the house or an apartment, right? You have to paint it. You have to fix the bathroom. When we have a business, you've got to buy new equipment. You've got to fix the roof. You've got to make investments, and you have to account for that. You can't assume you're not going to spend money on investments. So here we have $17 million of investments. We're going to spend in 220 and you can look you know it's going to go up a little bit every year and now we have networking capital this is the increase in networking capital because just like you have money in your bank right you don't you have zero hopefully not in your checking account you need money to operate on and when you have a business we need to have cash in the bank and things like that or, or we have receivables it's sales we made but they're not liquid so this is an increase that we need in networking capital every year. 6.4 million, 6.6, .6, just to run the business, right? We need to have a little cushion in there to make payroll and stuff like that. Now, once you have these numbers here, okay, we can then figure out what our net cash flow is. In 220, we'd make $27 million in net cash flow. Okay, that's what we'd expect. And this number is increasing every year, right? So now that we know our cash flows, we have a problem here in, in 2024 because this business, we're not projecting it's going to go out of business. It's like buying Ford Motor Company in 1930. If you bought Ford Motor Company in 1930, well, here we are at uh, 2020. It's still here. So you can't just account for four years of cash flow, right? You have all those other years. And we do have a finance technique that's called a perpetuity or the Gordon Growth Method that calculates what we're going to earn in this business based on our assumptions from 2024 through infinity. And remember, a dollar in 30 or 40 years is worth maybe a, 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 a one cent now. So those cash flows that go way out, 50, 60, 70 years, they're basically worth nothing now. But this method takes all that into consideration so you can do your calculations. And here's the, uh, here's the formula, okay? Basically, we're going to take our growth rate. You know, and put, you know, it's 1.03. And we're going to divide it by our 
discount rate minus our growth rate, right? And we're going to multiply this by our cash flow that we have here, which is 30,000, 30,000,000.4. And when you do this formula, this kind of calculates what you're going to get in those out years. We're going to get about a net present value as of, you know, December 31st, 2024 of 22, 222,000,000.7. 22, That's what all those cash flows are worth. Now, we can actually do a, a, our analysis because I have all my cash flows. I have cash flows here in 220, 27 million, 27.8 million, 28.6, 29.5. And when I add these two, I have uh, 253.1 million in that fifth year. And I just simply take those and I, I uh, do a, uh, a discount on them. Now, we know how to do a discount, or you should know how to dis do a discount. It's basically the cash flow, right? And then you're going to divide it by the discount rate multiplied by an exponent. Like this is year one. So it's basically going to be uh, the 27 million divided by my discount rate, 1.1705. And I'm going to take that to my exponent of it's year one, right? I'm going to do for year two here. This is year three, year four, year five basically using these same exact numbers. And when I add all those up, it says, okay, you should be paying, if you want to earn 17% from this, you shouldn't pay $192 million, okay? And if we don't earn, seven, let's say we only earn 16%, well, then we're losing money because, right, it's worth 192 here. And our invest, our 17, we're not getting our, our return. We expect 17%. We're getting less, or hopefully we get more. 20%, this will be higher. So... Um, you know, this tells you how much you should pay for the business based on all these assumptions. Now, here's the interesting part, which most people don't do. Okay, now the capitalization rate we talked about, you derive it from the discount rate. And all I have to do, and, and you notice these numbers are the same, 192 million point one. All you have to do is take this cash flow here and divide it by your cap rate right, which is just 17 minus 3%, and you get the exact same number. So think about that. I mean, you should understand, I mean, why that happens, because we were assuming a constant growth. If you don't, then that's not going to happen. But the great thing here is that you could just get a cap rate, and it's going to give you a good answer once. It's going to give you information you can use. You don't have to go through all this work that I did, right? And, and remember, these, these spreadsheets in, in real life, are, you know, 15, 20, 100 pages long, the analysis for a big company. Uh, you know, this is compressed, but basically the same exact concept. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you know, just leave them below. We'll get back to you with an answer. We answer every single uh, question. And if you did enjoy this uh, video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.